Fading the public has made money for the first five weeks this season, but last week was actually the only week the public came out ahead. Do they do it two weeks in a row, or do they come back down to earth? I've got the answers for you. I've got the six most public sides for this Sunday and Monday, week six NFL action. We're fading the public right now. Hi, this is Steve Merrill, wagertalk.com, right back here on Wager Talk TV. And as you do each and every week here on the channel, I give you the most public sides, and we look a little bit deeper and see if we should play them or fade them or maybe just stay away. So let's get right to it. As I mentioned, last week was the first time all season the public came out ahead. They were 2-1 and one on the official plays, 4-1 and one overall, including the leans. But still, fading the public this season is 9-6, and six, 60% overall. Uh, so I do expect them to come back down to earth. And as often the case, when they have a rare winning week, they come out firing the next week. There are six official public plays this week, four road favorites, and ding, ding, double, double ding, ding, two public dogs this week. Double red flag alert. We're going to get to those in just a moment. Let's look at the four favorites. So the most public play this week for this week six in the NFL is the Pittsburgh Steelers minus three. And it's not necessarily playing on the Steelers. I think it's more fading the Las Vegas Raiders who are real in a tailspin right now, a dissension in the locker room as they've often have since moving to Las Vegas. O'Connell starting at quarterback. So there's a lot of uncertainty this week for Las Vegas. And it's hard for me to make a case for them unless maybe they get a spark with the quarterback change. Another reason I'm not in a hurry to fade the Steelers this week is they're coming off back-to-back losses. I liked them on Sunday night. Uh, Public was actually playing against them. The public's been back and forth with Pittsburgh the last several weeks, if you recall. Uh, They liked them at Indianapolis and lost. And then they faded them last week with Dallas and won. Now they're coming right back with them. But once again, I think this is more of a fade of Las Vegas than it is a play on the Steelers. Uh, Steelers have been okay overall this season, uh, very inconsistent. Uh, that loss last week, I really felt like they should have won that game. In fact, uh, we are two plays away from a perfect 6-0 sweep last week and on my best bets for my clients. The two losses we had were on the Bills and Steelers, the final play of each game. Otherwise, we go 6-0. and uh, We're having a fantastic sports season. Even the close losses were still up over 150 net units in all sports so far in 2024. Uh, the Raiders, of course, entered this game losing two of their last three, including a bad loss at Denver last week. But they did have a 3 nothing turnover deficit in that loss. Also a 3-0 turnover deficit in Week 1 against the Chargers. Uh, they've had a 3-2 turnover deficit in the other three games. They've gone 2-1 and one straight up in ATS. So we'll see if O'Connell can prevent from turning the ball over. Will the quarterback change make a difference? Um, also, they do do a lot of man coverage. Justin Fields has been a lot weaker during his career against man defenses. So there are some pluses for the Raiders here, uh, but the public is not liking it. They are fading them. The most public play this week is the Pittsburgh Steelers minus three. That's a late kickoff at 4 o'clock Eastern. All right, the second most public play this week is on the Atlanta Falcons minus six, and that's also a 425 Eastern kickoff. Not sure why this is a late afternoon game in Carolina. Can't imagine anybody wants to watch this one. And boy, you know, we talk about fading the public works because you get adjusted line value. Look ahead line on this game was three, three and a half. Now it is minus six across the board. Uh, So this line is definitely inflated based on recent results. And Kirk Cousins has been red hot. I don't expect that to continue, though. The Falcons have put up 62 combined points the last two weeks. He has thrown um, for nearly, actually over 700 yards, 704 yards the last two games. I look for him to come back down to earth a little bit here. And this could be a flat spot for Atlanta. And the line is definitely inflated. As I said, a week ago, this line might have been three, three and a half. Now it's six. Uh, So this does look like one of those textbook fade the public situations. I know it's hard to trust the Panthers, but if you recall, the one time we have recommended them this season, we actually used them as a client best bet, was back in week three when the public was fading with those Raiders and Carolina won and covered. They've gone 0-4 straight up in ATS in the other games, and I really haven't liked them in those games. I do think this is a spot this week where we can come in and maybe trust the Panthers once again. And it's never a play on the Panthers It's always a play against the other team. And I think this looks like a good spot to fade the Falcons. And the public is very heavy on Atlanta minus six. All right, there's a couple more uh, favorites that are very public. I'd say this is a two-way tie for third most public plays this week. The Sunday and Monday game. Let's start with the Sunday game. Houston Texans minus seven at New England. That's at one o'clock Eastern. Uh, Once again, New England has won just one of their last 11 home games. Boy, how this mighty franchise has fallen fast since Brady and now Belichick have left the building, they are 1-10 in 10 straight up their last 11 home games. So really hard for me to make a case for New England. Now at plus 7 or more, they don't necessarily have to win. You know, So we are getting a little bit of adjusted line value here. This line's probably a little bit higher uh, than it would have been just a couple weeks ago. 
But, it, you know, six, six and a half is the look ahead. So it really hasn't changed much. And that's because Houston, while being four and one this year, has covered only once all season. And that was actually last week against Buffalo. And I referenced that near six and oh miss that I had on Sunday because of two last play losses. Well, one was Pittsburgh, the other was Buffalo. Uh, the Texans were very close to being 0-4-1 and against the spread this year. They're now 1-3-1 and against the number after that last second field goal against the Bills last week. Houston is 4-1 and straight up, and one of the reasons they have a bad spread record, good straight up record, is because they were so good last year, they have become a public team. Um, so Faden Houston has worked overall this year, and you will see if it works this week, but I'm not in a hurry to back a Patriots team that's just 1-10 straight up at home and is also making a quarterback change. Uh, Drake May, the rookie May, is starting at quarterback. Two defensive players arrested this week. Uh, team looks like they're really in turmoil here. Now, one matchup edge that New England might have in this game, if you're looking for a reason to fade the public in this one, is the running game. Uh, they've been pretty good running the ball this year, almost five yards per carry. Uh, their passing attack has been atrocious, 4.2 yards per pass. So May will actually probably have a better game than the seasonal numbers. And the Texans have struggled to stop the run. They're giving up 4.8 yards per carry. So if New England can run the ball, as I think they can, and keep it close, maybe they can stay within that seven-point spread. So once again, the third most public play on Sunday is the Houston Texans, minus seven at 1 o'clock Eastern. All right, we're going to look at the Monday night game here and also a couple public dogs for you. Just a quick reminder, if you want my official best bets, I sometimes agree with the public. We don't just always blindly fade them, uh, but we use it as a filter. This is one of the many different handicapping techniques and filters that I use each and every week to derive my best bets. And boy, does it work well because this season and the last two seasons, in fact, the last three seasons combined, nobody has won more ATS units of profit in college and pro football combined than I have at wagertalk.com. But it's not just football. Baseball finished the regular season on a 31-13 and best bet run this year. NBA basketball starts in less than two weeks. I'm number one the last three years combined in NBA and also number one all-time units one in the NBA in the history of wagertalk.com. So yes, this is a great time to be an all-sports, all-access subscriber. In fact, this is the only time of year over the next month we get football, baseball, and basketball all going at the same time. We have a 60-day special right now where you get a 30-day and then second 30 days for just $99 more. Once again, it's a buy a 30-day, get the second 30 days for just $99 more. It's a 60-day, two-month all-access special. Or if you're serious about taking a real long-term investment approach, the one-year all-access is the best value. And with promo code SM365, you get an instant $800 discount, which makes it an even better value. That gets it down to just $3 a day, just over a dollar per play for every football, baseball, basketball, college, and pro best bet for the next 365 days and nights. Once again, that promo code is SM365, an instant $811 discount on the one-year all-access. Look, you don't have to decide right now. Go to my page, check out the special offers and promo codes. They're all written down there. You don't have to memorize them. You'll see the daily best bets. You'll also see a recap of my last 20 best bets. That updates every day. It's a rolling recap with analysis. And you'll also see a free play. Don't forget about the bonus free plays, not only from the videos here, but also on my page every day, an additional bonus free play. Steve Merrill, wagertalk.com. Get there quicker with shortcut wt.buzz slash sm. All right, let's get to... One more public road favorite, the Monday night game, and then two public dogs for this week, week six here. We're looking at the Monday night game. Now, I did do a solo standalone video, a deep five-minute analysis of the Bills-Jets, so go check that out here on Wager Talk TV. But the Bills, as I mentioned in that video, are a very public play this week, and I would say they're tied with Houston as the third most public selection this week, and that is your Monday night game, 8-15 Eastern on ESPN and ABC. Bills currently minus 2.5, and, and I do lean towards the Jets here. I think this is a fade-the-public situation. I would like to get the key number of plus 3 or more, and the fact that this is the late Monday night game and the Buffalo Bills look public, and the public usually comes in even more on game day, uh, you might see some threes by kickoff. So if you're going to play the Jets, I would wait. See if you can get a plus three or higher. At the current line of plus two and a half, I think the Jets make an excellent teaser selection, probably the best six-point teaser selection this week. And their offense has been terrible this year, but we do have a catalyst now. Offensive coordinator switched. Head coach has been fired. Slay has gone. Another defensive coordinator steps in, so I really don't think it was his fault. Nathaniel Hackett has been let go as offensive coordinator. That's where the problem's been this year. 
So there is a chance we could see a spark, a little bit better showing by the Jets' offense. And also, Buffalo doesn't blitz as much as the last two opponents, Broncos and Vikings, which have given Rodgers and company a lot of trouble. So I think the matchup is a little bit more favorable. The coaching change should be a spark for the Jets. Monday night football, national TV at home. And also, let's not forget, this is the matchup last year in week one in which Rodgers was knocked out. So I think it's a focus spot for New York. Let's see if we can get a plus three or more by kickoff, which might happen because the public is on the Buffalo Bills on Monday night football. All right, those are your four most public sides for this week. Steelers, Falcons, Texans, and Bills. There are two public underdogs. Ding, ding. Double red flag alert. Let's look at the first one on Sunday, 1 o'clock Eastern. Not my Washington Commanders are getting a lot of love from the public. I also did a deep dive five-minute standalone video for this game, Ravens and Commanders. As I mentioned in that video, I do like the Ravens in this game for several reasons. Uh, First of all, we talk about fading the public works long-term because you get adjusted line value. That's definitely the case here. The look-ahead line was minus 7 to minus 8 just a week ago. Now it's 6.5. It's below that key number of 7. Um, By the way, Lamar Jackson, I didn't mention this in the video, but Lamar Jackson, 21-3 and straight up against NFC teams. I don't read too much into that. But the big thing here is I do think it's a good spot to fade the Commanders as they're playing well above expectations with a 4-1 and start. Jaden Daniels looks for real. He probably is the rookie of the year, but he's also playing out of his skin right now as far as ability. Hey, no pun intended. No Redskin pun, right? Future Redskin fan. We'll see if they change the name back. But Jaden Daniels is having a great season. Um, but his numbers are still really not obtainable. Their third down conversion and third and long conversions are just double what the league average, even what the league best numbers are each year. And Baltimore has a great rushing offense, over six yards per carry. Commanders are giving up over five yards per rush. Ravens have a substantial edge on the line of scrimmage. Now, their pass defense has been a concern this year, and that's where Washington maybe has some backdoor cover potential. But still, I think we're getting a good situational spot Uh, Commanders have won and covered four in a row after losing by 17 against Tampa, and this is by far the toughest opponent they face this season. I think this is a good spot to fade a public dog. Uh, Once again, Commanders plus six and a half, a very public dog this week. One of the most public underdogs I've seen so far this season. All right, the other public dog is the Denver Broncos plus three, and that's on the late afternoon card Sunday at 4.05 Eastern. And I think this is another public dog we should fade here. I like the Chargers, the LA Chargers, minus the three points. Um, Denver, you know, is a team that looked just awful the first few weeks of the season. And then they kind of stepped things up and started playing a little bit better here in recent weeks. Um, But I'm not a believer. I think this team is still very challenged. Um, The quarterback situation, huge disadvantage, in my opinion, with Bo Nix versus Justin Herbert, who's one of the best uh, in the league. And as far as the matchup goes here, I think it's a good one for the Chargers. We always worry about the thin air and altitude, but this is a divisional game. Uh, The Chargers are used to playing in Mile High Stadium, and their passing numbers are down this year. They've averaged just 5.9 yards per pass, but once again, I think there's plenty in that tank still for the San Diego passing offense. And speaking of bad passing numbers, Bo Nix and the Broncos overall averaging just 5 yards per pass attempt. Uh, They're just not getting it done, just 4.6 yards per play overall. I'm not going to read too much into the recent results. I think this is definitely a situation in which Denver's become a bit overrated. Nobody wanted anything to do with them after the 0-2 start. They've now won three in a row straight up and against the spread, including twice as a dog, and boom, all of a sudden they're a public underdog. I think this is a spot in which you fade them. Take a look at the Chargers minus three. I would fade both of these public underdogs this week. Once again, your two public dogs, the Commanders and the Broncos. One additional public lean for you, which was also another public dog, but this one's a little wish-washy. One other public lean for you this week would be the Colts. And they do currently qualify as we head into the weekend as a public dog because that's all the quarterback uncertainty. In fact, Indianapolis opened as a one, one one-and-a-half point favorite, uh, but now they're a a two-and-a-half to three-point dog, depending on where you're looking. There are some threes out there now. Um, So, you know, two-and-a-half to three, this line has definitely moved. And that's because we don't know for sure if Anthony Richardson is going to be a quarterback as we head into the weekend. Uh, Will Levis is back most likely for the Titans. Uh, But what's interesting here is that the sharp money, at least the injury move money, has come in on the Titans, yet the public is still all over the Colts. So we do have a little bit of a sharp square divide, and I wanted to point that out to you. An additional public lean, public dog lean on the Colts, plus two and a half on Sunday afternoon. All right, that's it for you. We got six of public, six official public plays plus that additional lean on the Colts. Heavy week for the public. Let's see what happens. They finally turned a profit last week after losing the first four weeks. Do we fade them or do we play them? You let me know in the comments below. I read all the comments. I reply back. Where do you agree or disagree with the public here in week six? And which NFL best bets do you like the most? 
Hey, don't forget to include some player props. We don't touch on player props here in this video, but I always love to hear your feedback. I honestly believe we have some of the smartest and sharpest sports betting viewers here on Wager Talk TV. So please comment below. I do truly read the comments and I reply back. If you're liking these free play videos, thumbs up, like, boom, smash it. I appreciate it. That's always appreciated. And don't forget to hit subscribe and click the bell for instant alerts so you know when this video is posted each and every week, along with my college football top 25 video and also all those solo free play videos throughout the week. I've been trying to do the Thursday, Sunday, Monday night games for you every week here on the channel. I mentioned that I have the Bills-Jets preview up. also have your Sunday night game between the Bengals and Giants, and there's a little bit of public sentiment in that game as well, which I give you in the free play video. So go check that out here. Click subscribe and click the bell for instant alerts. Don't forget, once again, the two-month special is still available through this weekend. You buy the one month, you get the second month for just $99. No promo code needed. Or the one-year all-access. If you've been dragging your heels, I know so many of you gotten on board the last few weeks and you've been cashing in already, but a few of you have sat back and watched winter after winter pass you by. Don't delay any longer. Don't overthink it. Start taking a serious, consistent investment approach. Promo code SM365 gets you a full year Instant $800 discount works out to just over a dollar a play for every football, baseball, and basketball best bet that I release. It's quite simple. If I have a play, my clients get it as well, and I've won consistently now for 29 straight seasons as a full-time professional handicapper, and we're up over 150 units already. Just nine-plus months into the year, we're up over 150 units, and there's still plenty more to come. Steve Merrill, wagertalk.com. All the details are on my homepage, along with those bonus free plays. Check out the daily free plays. Steve Merrill wagertalk.com and get there quicker with shortcut wt.buzz slash sm. Follow me on social media at Steve Merrill, two R's, one L, you know the deal, two R's, one L, at Steve Merrill on X and Instagram. And stay tuned here to Wager Talk TV for some more great free betting content coming up next.